Hey, this is Andrew McLaren. So I want to show you what I do on day zero, the first day of instruction with students, which is typically, in my experience, like not a full period. It's kind of like a shortened period. So it might be, these are designed to be done in one period or kind of rushed through. If you've got less than like 45 minutes, you might be able to do all of this, but you should probably cut some out. The, um, the most essential elements of the slides are like the breathing exercises. And I really like my game, uh, Stay Standing If, where you basically pick some things about yourselves to share with the kids. And then the students, if they have that in common, they are going to stay standing. If it's um, false for them, they sit down. So it's a way for kids to get to know each other as well as you. And um, then I really liked this other game that I did called would you rather but there was this rotation where like there's some groups groups of students in the center of the classroom and others on the outside of the classroom and they were paired talking to each other um, but then the outer circle would rotate and so they would be paired to talk about a prompt individually um, with different people for each prompt so like you would be paired with one person for this and then rotate over be paired with someone else for this one rotate over, uh, be paired with someone else for this one. And I tried to make these be like kind of interesting facts that I find interesting to discuss and also kind of just safe conversations in general. <laughs> um, and then also a little bit more like interesting conversations as well. Um, and then I gave students the opportunity to, to give some input as well. So those are like the most essential things. I did also put like in positive self-talk at the end to give them a chance to practice that and some breathing exercises at the beginning. So I'll, I'm going to walk through the rest, all of the slides at this point and kind of help you understand what class looks like with this um, from this point on in the video. All right. So the first slide, I have some instructions for students to help them find their seats. And this is on a projector for me. Um, as well, I think there was a TV in the room when I was doing this. There was like a TV and a projector. It was like an old TV. So instructions to help them get to their seats on the top. And then in the center here, you could either do like a video. If you know how to make and insert a video, that's pretty, pretty good for the kids to see. And the first thing as they come in to be like, oh, this teacher knows what they're doing. Um, and then if you're not um as comfortable with that just put some images up so the kids get to know you and you could just do like a collage a giant collage of a ton of images the main thing is that this gives students like things to think about possibly at talking to you about or asking you about while they're coming in and sitting down and i also like to give them a little bit of time to just talk to each other if if they know each other as they come in right then uh, 60 seconds for breathing exercises. Later on in the, the um, year, this I just told students you have to stay quiet for. Um, and you can do the breathing exercise that I'm doing, or you can do a different one. But on the first one, they I told them to do the same one as me, unless they, for whatever reason, have a hard time keeping the pace. So I think I did like deep breath in, deep breath out, and just kind of in and out with them. You can also, there's a number of different variations you can do for breathing exercises. Ones where there's like different seconds for breathing in and breathing out. But again, for students with asthma, that can be pretty tricky to make them breathe at a certain pace. So I wouldn't force students to do breathing exercises, but give them the opportunity with the expectation that they're doing it. So then there's also, this, I just love this picture, and I was teaching up in Oregon, so this is Mount St. Helens, so it's local, important for the subject matter that we're going to be talking about with the earth science and the tectonic plates for part of the year. So I picked some sort of interesting, like, cover for the class. Um, like, I think this is seventh grade science for me. And then your name, right? So some sort of interesting picture. And then um, just saying, hi, nice to meet you. I, I love teaching this stuff. May give them a little background about your, yourself at that point. Um, and then tell them, you know, the, the overview for the class, right? <laughs> um, basically for me, I had some things with them that we had to do in Google Classroom. 
uh, you can use these slides, but you don't have to. You could probably cut this out. And I had uh, something that they had to do, like a survey. So they needed to get in Google Classroom on that first day so they could do the survey by Friday. I think this was on a Wednesday, I believe. So I also gave them a little game here. This is a minor one, but I, I thought it was interesting what I learned from it. You just get the students to think of a number one through 100 and then go around and see what numbers people had and keep track of that. And a lot of kids will likely have like a pair or maybe two pairs or even a triple uh, where people pick the same number randomly. There's also going to be some students that pick inappropriate numbers. I personally chose to ignore that on the first day because I didn't want to give them too much attention. And it also was good for me to know who's going to push the limit on these things. Who do I need to have conversations with? It just put people on my radar. Um, it, was, it was interesting as well, just from a mathematical side, that this does often ca cause doubles or triples, even a class of 30. So it's an interesting math problem for the kids to think about and show them that you, um, you're you observant of these weird uh, patterns as well that happen sometimes. It's like the birthday problem, if you're familiar with that, where um, in a class of 30, usually there's a pair of students that have the same birthday. Similar sort of idea, right? Then I did the stay standing if, and so I gave them these instructions, we talked about it, where, um, these were images of things I am, that these are true for me, like I have a cat, right? And if you, it's true for you, you stay standing. If it's false, you sit down. So like a lot of students are gonna be like, yeah, I play video games, right? So <laughs> you'll get a fair amount of them seeing who else are the gamers and be like, oh, who, who can I play games with? Um, and then you can also be like, I've built a computer. So you can really know who's tech, tech savvy. And there's usually one or two kids I've found in my classes that have either built a computer themselves or have a family member who does that. And so it's, it's really cool when there's something that you're very passionate about that students are also passionate about or have family members that are passionate about it, right? Because it's a thing that helps them see you is similar to them and helps you have conversations with them. I've had so many conversations around my computer with kids. It's it's well worth the money <laughs> just from that. And the gaming too, let's be real. <laughs> um, and then, you know, a picture of me going for a hike with my wife. Uh, and so if like people like to go for hikes, then they can share that information and other kids will kind of key into that. And also this gets the kids to know that I'm, I don't just hike, I like to backpack, right? And I take that seriously. And then um, I used to bike to work. So this was cool being able to share that with students and then also see who are the kids who are bikers and, and walkers uh, versus the people who go on the bus or get driven to school kind of interesting and kids will see each other out on the bike path and they're like oh hey I had science with you right so it's helping them build these this sense of community at the school not just in your classroom but um, outside of the classroom as well and then uh, I was teaching in a district that had a fair amount of people who were international and so they had a lot of family living in different countries and I want to share that you know I sound American but I'm actually English and uh, here's a picture of my granny. And uh, yeah, it was, it's good for me to get to share that with students. And then also I can be like, who else are the students that are growing up like me with, without grandparents nearby, right? Who's here with their parents? Because uh, I get that. I get what that's like. That helps them understand that I understand a bit of their perspective and, and their childhood on a personal level, right? And then I really like to read there's always some readers in there <laughs> and I've, I've got some good book recommendations so I can talk to kids about that as well. And that's nice for them. Your, your bookworms to know they can talk to you. Then I, I broke the game up before we did the next game, just to do some general things or like behavior management or expectations. So they know what it is 
coming into the, the classroom tomorrow, right? And then this is a format that they're going to be familiar with for the um, the year that I used these slides. This was like the welcome format where it told them what they need to have and it gave them a warm-up question. So it builds that routine of a regular format a little bit and an easy question for them to discuss. So this was a little bit at their table. So you can see that it's I'm mixing up like table conversation and class-wide conversation um, fair amount in here. So they're interacting, but they're interacting with different groups of people and individuals of people. Then we did another breathing exercise just to give them some time. It's like, okay, you've probably not been talking a lot. Uh, we just come back from COVID, so <laughs> give them some time to warm back up. I think it's still a good idea to keep this breathing exercise in for other grade levels and people coming in the first day of school anyways. Then I really like this. I basically, in my classroom, I had um, like tables on the outside and then a couple tables on the inside. And so I had half the class, I, I assigned A's, and then the other half I assigned B's, you know, when you go like A, B, A, B, A, B, and you just assign that to them. And I told the A's to stand up in the center of the classroom facing out. Okay, they stood up and they went and, and did that. And I told the Bs to stand up and pair up with an A, but they're going to be facing inwards to the center of the classroom. So they're standing on the outside facing in. They're going to get a discussion prompt. They're going to talk with that person. And then uh, I'll tell them after a minute's been up and they're going to go clockwise. So the Bs were moving and As were still. So I really liked having this visual up there because then students were able to be like, how am I moving? They'd look up there and they'd look down here and kind of figure it out and talk to each other a little bit. And then once everyone was in position, I'd give them the first prompt and they would discuss that. And this is, a I personally, I'm thinking I, I would rather be in a space station because I want to be near Earth just in case. But everyone says they want to be on Mars. <laughs> but there's a few people who will, will point out the downsides of it. And that's kind of cool. And then um, <laughs> after this question, I had some students who were like, oh, no, I, I, I'm i going to love this class. I know I'm going to love this class. So kind of like sci-fi slash social justice elements where you're talking about like uh, the U.S. nuclear program causing a lot of issues in the Pacific Oceans with pollution and radiation, right? So there's a little bit of some of my social justice elements coming into these questions as well. And then this is just like a silly one, pretty easy. Would you rather be too fancy or not fancy enough? Uh, and then a lot of kids said for this, it kind of depends on where you live, right? Air conditioning is going to be like life or death for some people in some places. But uh, <laughs> we were in a pretty high area, so they, they appreciate that. And so on and so forth. They go through these questions. This is kind of interesting because some students may be vegetarian, right? And so this gives uh, some opportunity to share about their, their diet and how their family eats and why their family eats that way, if they're comfortable that much with the people, right? So then you got your last one to give students some input. I don't think students really had much input because I hadn't told them beforehand. So you might want to tell them beforehand what's going on with that. And I really liked this idea of giving students uh, the chance to talk to themselves in a positive way before we left class. I think I ran out of time for this, so don't worry if you didn't get to it or if you don't get through all these questions. I think I finished them up like on the next day. Very easy to continue that if you need to. And always good on the first day to make sure kids know where they're going to go next and they know what's going on with their planners and all that logistics. There's always someone who needs help at the end of class, so it's good to give them a couple minutes just to relax and ask those questions. Okay, I think that's everything for me. Uh, thank you for joining me. This has been Andrew McLaren. Thank you for McLearning with me. I've got a few more offers that I'd like to let you know about, and remember, like and subscribe. For each video on YouTube, I am making an interactive version using HP5. These will be for sale on Podia. And if you click on the link in the video, you should be able to go directly to that product.
I also have two demos I'm going to be linking so you can kind of see what they, these products look like. Um, so I would recommend checking out those demos. I also offer one-on-one -on -one remote tutoring through Wizant. Please use the links that I have linked below. That way I can get 100% of the uh, hourly rate as opposed to 75. Each video also has a link for my Patreon and you can join at the $3 level to get some resources I use for tutoring and, or to support the channel. And I also have a $5 raffle level, which you could either get some free online tutoring or five uh, interactive lessons for free. You choose which ones. And then I also have my Teachers Pay Teachers, which has some old lessons that I made from when I used to be a teacher. I may be adding to that. Thank you for spending your time with me. I hope that you learned something.